What's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. And this one, we're going to talk about Kenny Galladay a little bit and kind of what to expect from him this season and um, expect in terms of production and in terms of just the type of receiver he will be. This was a topic that actually popped up last night on the Young Guns podcast, episode 53. That's right, we're back. It was the first episode, I think, in like three or four weeks. And it was something that popped up and stuck with me through the night and through the morning. And I just really want to sort of give my thoughts on what I think Kenny Galli is going to be based on, you know, what we've already seen from him and based off of a couple of quote unquote historical examples. Now, Kenny Galli will be a thousand yard receiver for the Giants. He will be our number one wide receiver. Two things which we haven't had since Odell Beckham. We all know the importance of a number one wide receiver. We all know the importance of having somebody that could, you know, consistently rack up that thousand yards in a season. And as Galladay has shown, when he is healthy um, in the two out of the four years in his league so far, which was 2018 and 2019, he is capable of being a thousand yard receiver. To be honest, there may still be a question there as to can he actually do it? Because, you know, you haven't had three years of him being this number one type of guy, this guy that could rack up those numbers. I personally think he can be because I do think last year in Detroit, um, even though he did get injured some point during the season, I do think he stayed out a lot longer than he was actually supposed to in order to, you know, basically be done with Detroit and with the Lions. But real quickly, there's not much I need to go over when it comes to the importance of having a guy like Gale on your team, of having a true number one. We all know it. That's why we were all campaigning for it in the offseason. It is a necessary ingredient for any team that wants to be considered good in the NFL and any team that wants to compete in the future. It's very necessary if you want to have a good run game as we've seen this past year. Without that true number one, what happened to our run game and with people stacking the box? And it's very, very important for a young quarterback to have that guy. But now with Kenny Galladay, I do want to say he's not going to be that dominant wide receiver in terms of he's going to absolutely dominate every single minute of every single game that he's in. He's not that. He's not, you know, prime Julio Jones. He's not DeAndre Hopkins. He's also not Odell Beckham Jr., which I guess is the reason I'm doing this because I don't want some Giants fans to have this misconception of a thousand yard receiver is going to be what Odell was in his prime is going to be what those other guys are that I mentioned because those guys are not thousand yard receivers. You know what I'm saying? Julio and D-Hop, they're dominant wide receivers that rock up like 13 to 1600 yards in a season. That looks very different from racking up a thousand yards in a season when you go and you look at game logs. Now, Galladay will be dominant in the sense that he will be known that he's on the field. He will be feared because he already is kind of feared in the NFL. The guy is already one of the best 50-50 and contested catch wide receivers in the NFL. He has the height that we have been looking for for a long time in a wide receiver. And he's had games where he straight up could not be stopped by the opposing cornerbacks. So he will be dominant in that sense, but he won't be a guy that's going to go out there and give you 100 yards every single game which at the end of the day is going to give you 1600 yards in a season right because let's all think about how game logs happen how these thousand yards happen i just want to set realistic expectations for some fans so if we go and we look at galladay's best season in the nfl so far which was 2019 and in 2019 he gave detroit an 1190 yard season as you can see there's only about Five games where he crossed that 100-yard threshold, and in those games, he did dominate, which is clear to see. But there's going to be games where he either didn't show up or, you know, he was just not a factor in the offense. Like, there's a game where he racked up 21 yards, and I do hope to avoid that. I hope the splits with us is going to be a lot more consistent and evenly spread but i do think you're gonna see games this season where galladay has like i don't know maybe a 60 yard game and maybe somebody else shows out maybe galladay takes a step back a couple times so that Kadarius or darius or even sterling shepherd could show out or one game we just run the ball so much that passing was a non-factor and he won the game by just shoving the rock down their throat and real quick, for those of you, which I don't think it's many, but for any fans that might for some reason think that Kenny Galladay is like a top 10 receiver in the league 
and it's gonna give us like 1400 yards let me just show you wide receiver stats from last year and i just want to say being a top 10 wide receiver in the nfl puts you in an, basically an elite category there are a lot of good and great wide receivers in the nfl in my opinion Gale is a top 20 maybe top 15 wide receiver but that's not as that's not a bad thing right because of how deep the wide receivers are in the NFL. If you say, for example, somebody's like a top 20 or top 15 running back, then it's a lot more different from saying if you're a top 20 or top 15 wide receiver. If you look at the guys that racked up the most yards in the last season, Justin Jefferson is at the top with even 1,400, followed by Calvin Ridley with 13. DeAndre also had 13. DJ Moore had 11. Brandon Cooks also had 11, along with Robbie Anderson. And then Keenan Allen. Oh, no, Robbie Anderson had uh, 1,000. My bad. It was Amari Cooper that had 11. And then Keenan Allen drops down at 900. As you can see, it's kind of hard to be a 1,000-yard receiver in the NFL. I do think that Kenny Galladay could do it. But let's take a look at somebody like Brandon Cooks. We could see what his game logs look like because that stat line, that production that he gave, a 1,150 yards with three touchdowns, I think is going to be similar to what we may see from Gale in year one. Maybe a little more uh, touchdowns there because he is a very big red zone threat. But when you go and you look at Brandon Cook's game logs from 2020, this is what you see. You see that he had three games where he crossed that 100 yard mark and it's a lot more evenly spread from the 2019 Gale. This is what I like where you see a lot of games that he's getting like 60 to 80 yards a game and then that's how he built up his production over the course of the season. There is a couple of outliers like when he got 20 week one, maybe he was working himself into the system because I think this was his first year with the Texans. But this is a nice even spread, which is something I think Gale is going to produce for us. And to reiterate, he's not going to be, for example, prime Odell. You know what I'm saying? Prime Julio. And part of the reason for that, you know, other than he's just not that type of receiver, is he's not the only weapon available. When Odell was giving us 14 and 1300 yard seasons, he was the only guy that we could throw to in the first place, and that plays a part in it. When, and Well, Julio, this is why Julio is just another level, because he was still doing like 13, 1400 yards seasons, but for most of his prime when he was doing it, he was like the only receiving target. But let's go and look at somebody that we all compared Kenny Galli to this offseason in terms of impact and a little bit of play style as well. And I for sure compare him to Kenny Gala, and I could see a very similar season for Gale that as this guy did have with the Giants in his first year here, Plaxico Burris. When Burris came to the Giants in 2005, he racked up 1,214 yards and seven touchdowns. I really think that could be what we're looking at for Kenny Galladay in year one or something extremely similar. And you go to the game logs for Burris from that season. He had four games where he crossed that threshold we, we've been constantly mentioning so far. And one of them was against the Rams where he even had 200 yards receiving. But it's that nice even spread I'm seeing where his lowest game of the year was 34 yards late week 15 against the Chiefs. For the most part though, you're seeing 50 to 70, even 80 yard games out of Burris. I think he's going to have a very similar season to Plaxico, not only because their play styles are similar, not only because they're the same type of wide receiver, big body contested catch, but also because of what we've been saying the entire offseason, why we wanted Galladay here in the first place. He could help Daniel Jones the same way that Burris did Eli early on in his career. And also when Burris was here, he wasn't the only receiving option. There was legitimate receiving options other than Plaxico on the team. Amani Toomer was still here. We still had Tiki Barber at running back. It's extremely similar to Daniel Jones, Saquon, and say Sterling Shepard right now. But I just want to quickly put together this video for you guys because I have a feeling a good amount of Giants fans are going to say Galladay is supposed to be something that he is. And they're going to say he's supposed to be dominant every game. You're supposed to feel his presence every game. He's supposed to be racking up 80 to 100 yards every game, which is just not what he is. And to be fair, there's only like five guys like that in the NFL year in, year out. But put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you all think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.